Welcome to the Sonarc software overview of the Sonance DSP amplifiers. This is the third and final installment of three videos to help you navigate and configure your DSP amplifier. Working with the Assign Preset section is similar to the work done with the In Out Settings tab in the previous video. The reason for having it again here is to provide you one page to set and create all your DSP work without having to navigate back and forth between pages. So if you change the name of an output on this page, it will update that name on the In Out Settings tab. Likewise, if you change the selected preset on this page, it will also update the preset on the In Out Settings tab. The Test Signal section gives you choices between the DSP amplifier's pink noise generator or any of your connected inputs for your equalization work. The volume settings area allows you to adjust the level of pink noise or test signal. Changes made in volume settings are independent of the volume selections made on the previous In Out Settings tab and will not affect those selections. The On Off lets you toggle the signal selected to the channel chosen. The Import Export Preset buttons let you upload presets from your computer or download presets to your computer. You can import or export all presets in one file or a single EQ preset using the Import Export functions. This allows you to capture all 50 EQ presets so you can make your own library and import it into your amplifier. To export a single preset, Use the blue pull-down menu called Select EQ Preset located under the green Import Export buttons. Select the preset you want to export from the pull-down menu. Press the green Export button. Depending on your web browser, the export of file will be saved in your Downloads folder or you will be prompted where you would like to save the file. Import the speaker preset from a known location on your computer. In Sonarc, select the location you would like to store the new preset using the Select EQ Preset pull-down menu. You can save the new preset in any of the open preset locations or you can overwrite an existing preset that you do not need. Press the green Import button. You will be directed to My Computer or Finder. Find and select the new preset you would like to import you will be directed to a screen that says Upload Successful. Press the click here to go back highlighted text. The preset will now be saved in the location you selected. You can also download additional presets from Sonance.com in the DSP Amplifier section of the website. Importing and exporting presets are great ways to minimize your DSP time on similar projects. Copy Presets gives you the ability to copy an existing preset in your library and copy it to either an open slot in your library or overwrite any of the presets you will not be using. This is useful when adjusting your presets and you want to have the original still in the library as a backup or you just need several variations based off the original preset. Select the From button and select the preset you would like to copy. Then move to the To button and choose the slot where you want the preset to copy to. To complete the Copy Preset action, click the green Copy button. The lower half of the EQ Settings page is your workspace for manually adjusting the sound. The first step will be selecting a preset to edit. Click on the Select Preset to Edit button to scroll through and select the preset you want to edit. In this example, we will choose the AS38RS to customize. The Edit Name field is the area to rename your edited preset. Be sure to use a unique name that will differentiate the newly edited preset from the original. If for any reason, you would like to undo your edits, the Reset Settings will default the preset to its original setting. To do so, just click the green Reset button. The Output Frequency Response Graph 
lets you view how your edits are affecting the curves on the frequencies of the selected preset. This selection is for visual reference only. You cannot drag and drop the curves to change the preset. This greatly reduces unintended changes in the curves due to inadvertent mouse movements or clicks. Parametric EQ section gives access to adjust 10 bands of parametric equalization labeled EQ1 through EQ10. EQ on off simply toggles the EQ for the particular band. EQ frequency is where you can enter the center of the frequency range you would like to affect. Adjustments made to the EQ Q area will widen or narrow the selected frequency range. The smaller the number, the wider the range. The larger the number, the narrower the range will be. The minimum EQ Q is 0.3 and the maximum is 24. EQ gain plus or minus dB is another free type area where you can set the gain plus or minus 12 dB. Please be careful when adjusting gain to prevent possible damage from overdriving the speakers. The delay section allows for adjustments and timing to compensate for dissimilar distances between right and left speakers or between satellites and a subwoofer. This is similar to the delay function that is built into most home theater receivers. The free type fields here are for adjusting milliseconds, feet, or meters. A number can be entered in any of the three fields and the others will automatically calculate. The maximum delay is 12 milliseconds or approximately 4.07 meters or 13.59 feet. The tilt controls are useful when you want to increase or decrease the bass or treble over a wide range of frequencies. This could be useful if your speakers are installed in a very reflective room that makes the speakers sound bright. To correct for this, we would apply possibly plus 3 dB of low tilt starting at 100 Hz. In the same room, to reduce the high frequencies, we would apply a minus 3 dB of high tilt at 5000 Hz. As you can see on the frequency response graph, all frequencies below 100 Hz have been raised 3 dB and all frequencies above 5000 Hz have been reduced 3 dB. The tilt control has a range of plus 12 to minus 12 dB. Keep in mind that for every additional 3 dB of tilt or equalization that is applied, you will use double the amplifier power. Applying an excess of low or high tilt can damage your speakers. In the Sonux software, we have the ability to apply independent low pass and high pass crossover filters. The basic function of the low pass crossover is to eliminate the high frequencies from going to a subwoofer. The basic function of the high pass crossover is to eliminate the low frequencies from going to the satellite. Through proper adjustments of the crossover, you will be able to achieve a seamless blending of your satellites and subwoofers. Frequency. When applying a low pass filter to a subwoofer, the typical crossover frequency range would be 80 Hz to 100 Hz. The exact frequency will depend on the size of the satellite speaker and the subwoofer model you are using. The high pass filter will typically be set at the same frequency as the low pass filter. Setting the high and low pass filters at the same frequency is a good place to start. In some installations, it might be necessary to overlap the subwoofer and satellite slightly to get the smoothest frequency response. As a general rule, smaller satellites should typically use higher crossover frequencies and larger satellites a lower crossover frequency. Filter type. In the filter type pull down menu, we have the choice of 6 dB, 12 dB, 18 dB, and 24 dB Butterworth crossover filters. The numbers signify the rate of roll off per octave. The larger the number, the faster the rate of roll off. In most installations, a 12 dB filter will be the best option. 
The 12 dB filter rolls off fast enough to minimize overlap between satellites and subwoofers, but not so fast as to cause an audible separation of the speakers. When deciding on which crossover filter type to select, it does help to do some simple SPL measurements of the satellite and subwoofer together and select a filter that provides the flattest frequency response through the crossover region. The limiter is useful if you want to restrict the power that is applied to a speaker. This could be useful in areas of a house where the maximum volume should be limited to avoid disturbing neighbors or parents, for instance. The limiter feature allows minus 3 dB, minus 6 dB, and minus 9 dB of limiting. In the case of our DSP-8130, a minus 3 dB limiter will reduce the amplifier's power from 130 watts to 65 watts. The minus 6 dB limiter will reduce the output from 130 watts to 37.5 watts, and the minus 9 dB limiter would reduce the output to 18.75 watts. So that completes the EQ settings tab of the Sonarc software and the customization of the DSP presets. Should you have further questions, please refer to the install manual or call our technical support line at 949-492-7777 or visit us at sonance.com.